Hello and welcome back to episode two of Blender for Biochemists introducing molecular nodes. So in the previous video I showed you how to do the basic installation of molecular nodes. Today we're going to show you how to do some basic animations. Now from last video I've just updated molecular nodes to 0.8.1 to fix a small bug with EV. But so if you reinstall from that most of it should be fine. It's only if you try and display the atoms in EV that you get an error um, that is fixed in this version. Let's download a structure, download an NMR structure from the PDB that has multiple states. So if we go to the PDB, I'm going to use 1G03 as an example, or 1G03, and so this is an NMR structure. So there's going to be a whole bunch of states that are associated inside of this structure. So if we go into Blender, go to Molecular Nodes, and I just paste that in there, 1G03, and I click Download. Now what it's going to do, it's going to download it. It's going to detect, um, Molecular Nodes will detect that there are multiple states of the same protein inside of this file, and it will set up a few more things. And so you'll see up here on the top right that is 1G03 frames as well as properties. So it's detected that there's multiple frames of this animation, whether it be molecular dynamics or a morph, if you've morphed in PyMol, but in this case, it's just different structures from the NMR. And so what we can do is we can play back that animation. So already, if we just press space, you'll see that it just animates straight out of the gate. It doesn't require you to do anything. So let's, if we go into cycles, and rendered GPU compute. I'm just going to hide that box. Actually, delete that box. I'm just going to add in a plane for it to sit above. And we'll see that we have our animation that's playing back. So this is a multi-frame PDB. So if you've exported a morph from PyMol or Chimera to a multi-frame PDB, you can open it up inside of molecular nodes like this. Now. Let's have a look at what's happening inside of the Geometry Nodes workspace. So there's a couple more nodes that have been set up automatically, again, because Molecular Nodes detected that there were multiple frames. So there's this node here, which animates between uh, different frames in a trajectory, and there's also an Animate node, which just sort of animates a value from 0 to 1 or from um, something to something and you can use this all over the place but this is only for animating between frames of a trajectory so if I hold shift and drag you can see it's animating between those different trajectories there are a couple of options so wrap frames uh, well let's start with the first one there's interpolate frames so if I turn that off it will only it won't move in between the different frames it'll just switch to one and then switch to the other once you get to a time point. And so it's going to do that sort of solid switching between them. If you turn that on, it will interpolate the, posi the, atom the atomic positions between those different frames. And so you can see that sort of animating there. Now smoother will just mean it'll just sort of ease in, ease out. By default, it's a linear interpolation. Absolute frame position. Now this isn't so much of a problem here. I'll show you later on with the molecular dynamics trajectories what that is useful for. And wrap frames means it will animate the very last frame into the first frame. Now if you have an animation like this where they essentially will wrap around fine, that's fine. But if you have an animation where at the end of a molecular dynamics trajectory the end is very different from the start, you really don't want it to animate between the two. But we can plug this in if we do just animate. And we can have that just animate away. And again, this was just one click to download and it's already animating. Now, if we have a look at what's going on here. So go molecular nodes. If we radii rescale just to bring the size of those atoms down a bit so we can see what's going on. And we, if we do animate mapped. You'll see that some of these animations, like this ring here, doesn't really make sense. The atoms are kind of going through 
themselves. And now that's because it's interpolating between the different frame positions. So if I turn that off, you'll see that it goes to the correct positions. But if you have it on, the atoms will sort of go through them. And that's, this is because this isn't a trajectory ultimately, this is an NMR structure, so it's just different states. And so, you know, if you're from far away, you won't really notice. Um, but closer up, some of these weird atomic things can be a little bit uh, off-putting or strange. Now, these animations will also work with uh, the other, so something like ribbon. So if we turn that on, there we go. We've got our ribbon animating as we would expect. And the same with the surface. Now this is because the surface and the ribbon is all getting built inside of geometry nodes as we go. Whereas if you exported a surface from something like Pymol, you wouldn't then be able to animate it inside of Blender like we can here. And so what we can do, let's do, actually not surface, let's go ribbon. So we've got our ribbon. And what I want to do is add a, add just the side chains back in. So if we go selections, side chain, you'll see that there's this Boolean sort of thing. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to selections atoms. So this lets us, this lets us select particular atoms. Now you'll see that the input is atoms and the output from this ribbon is ribbon. That's because the output of this node is actually a mesh and we can't do anything with that. So we're going to need to work with the actual atoms themselves. And if we select our side chains and we just look at that and we, if we really I rescale that, you can see that it's all just the side chains and it's not the actual backbone. We could do the side chains sans the alpha carbon, but we want the side chains including the alpha carbon. And so we've got well, all of our um, side chains there. We want to add some sticks. And so again, we don't have any bond information. And so if we go properties, find bonds, and then plug that in, you can see that we're finding the bonds. Now, what you can also see is that as it moves in between the different um, positions, it's finding bonds because the atoms are sort of overlapping. So, so it's finding these sort of bonds that wouldn't exist because these atoms are doing weird movements. So let's turn our interpolate frames off and then that works fine. And so now if we join geometry and join it up with our ribbon, We've got our side chains with our backbone as a ribbon. And then we can also join up our actual atoms. And so there we go. We've got our ball and stick side chains and our uh, ribbon backbone. And this is playing through our animation. So that's a quick example for downloading something from the PDB. Let's now open a local file. So if we go back to our workspace here, we can click local file. And so this is where we can open up a local file. Now I'm going to put up a morph trajectory. So if we go desktop, ATP, accept, I'm going to uh, synthase. I'm just going to open that. And so this is going to take probably a minute or two to open up. And so what it's going to do, it's going to open the entire trajectory and create a frame. Now this animation is created through just a morph in Chimera X. I'll put um, a link down below and in the documentation as to how this is made. So this is made from just a couple of commands uh, inside of Chimera X to morph between different ATP synthase positions and then exporting this as a multi-frame PDB file, which I'm then importing into molecular nodes. So it is now imported. We've got our ATP synthase. We've got our properties in our frames. So tilde view selected. And we'll see it's all the way up here. So as you can see, here's our ATP synthase. I'm going to again add a light. So 
out of sun, you can see it. And now it looks basically the same as the previous video, but again, if we press space, now it's animated. So if I click on it, we can see here's our animation here. So it's animating through all of the different frames from, if I go timeline. So we've got 250 frames inside of Blender that it loops between. And so we're mapping from one to 250 and we're going from a value of zero to one. So it's doing one animation per 250 frames. So if I wanted this to go a bit faster, I put that up to three. So now it's doing three loops of the animation every 250 frames. And so it's animating through a bit faster there. Now, if I wanted this, if I go styling ribbon, so and I go down to material preview. So we can see it's made our ribbons and it's now animating between them. Now this is only at 13 frames per second and it's chugging a bit. And if we turn on our timings, you can see that some parts of this 20 milliseconds is going a bit slow. If we go to solid view, that should speed things up a little. But we are now animating ATP synthase. So in this case, what we can do is because it's hard to move ATP synthase around, I can turn off the absolute frame positions and now it's much easier. It'll be centered uh, where I would expect it to be. So let's hide that other protein. And so here's our ATP synthase animating through. Now, if we turn off our ribbons, we see all of our atoms here. One of the whole reasons I wanted to try and get proteins into um, geometry nodes is that you can do anything you can do inside of geometry nodes now with the atomic information. So if we go set position, and so again, we're starting to really get into geometry nodes. You'll probably want to look at previous tutorials, but this will change the position of the atoms, but we want it to be on a per atom basis. So if we go animation noise and we go lots of noise so you can see all of the atoms are going crazy now this isn't this is or isn't what you're after maybe but you can do a little appearing disappearing animation but what we want to do is we want to selectively apply that so if we go vector math scale we can apply that from zero to one. And if we do animation object effect and we create an empty a sphere, and we eyedropper that empty, just click that, scale to there. Now, if we click the empty and we scale that up, you can see that the effect is applied where the empty is. So we can animate this to come down. And so while the animation's appearing, you go all like this. And so this is where you can sort of have things appear, disappear, do all sorts of cool animations that because every atom inside of this has all of these atomic properties given to it and are as available for manipulation inside of geometry nodes. So this is where things start becoming really powerful. So that's a brief intro to some animation inside of geometry nodes, downloading from the PDB, opening a local file. Next video, I will get into showing how to use the MD analysis and the opening a proper uh, molecular dynamics trajectory. But for now, thanks again for watching. Thanks um, for the great support so far. Everyone seems pretty excited to have these videos come out. I'm pretty excited to be making them and to finally be able to share it widely. So please continue to tweet your creations at me. If you're very thankful, buy me a couple of coffees. I'd be very appreciative. Um, like and subscribe and all that fun stuff but I will see you in the next video.